You are listening to the Anxiety Podcast, where we support you to overcome anxiety and reduce stress. We will get vulnerable and it will be real. Here's your host, Tim J.P. Collins. Hello and welcome to the Anxiety Podcast. Thanks for joining me. This week on Anxiety Variety, I'm going to be talking about medication, prescription drugs, um, why I think that that is not the solution to you overcoming anxiety um, and why it's potentially going to slow that down. So I'll come on to that in a second. Before I get to it, I would like to tell you that today I put a new video on the homepage of the website. Um, It's a nice video, so check it out. Go to anxietypodcast.com. It's a presentation I gave, a speech of sorts, and it's me telling my story. So you may have listened to my story in episode one of the podcast. If you did, thanks for that. Uh, But if you want to see me talking about it as well, it's a slightly, you know, longer version I think. Um, And it's a bit more animated because you can see me. So check it out. Go to anxietypodcast.com. Have a look. Let me know what you think. While you're there, you can also sign up for the End Anxiety Toolkit, which includes a video, like an hour-long five keys to overcoming anxiety, an audio that you can use if you are panicking and you need some extra support. You can take me around with you in your pocket and uh, also my ebook is on there as well, which is the Lean In Guide to Overcome Anxiety. So have a look at those things. The resources are there for you. They're absolutely free, those things, to get you moving in the right direction. So have a look at that. Also, while you're on the home page, there's been more interaction going on in the good old Facebook group. So there's a button there. You can join us in the Facebook group. You can tell us how you're doing, ask questions, tell us what you're struggling with, and uh, you know, get to know some other people that are, are making big strides to, to overcome their anxiety. Um, also, if you want to add me on Facebook, I would be honored. My handle is Tim JP Collins. It's the same on Twitter. On Instagram, I am Anxiety Coach. So any of those places, if you want to say hi, tweet, like, whatever, um, there's all these different things on Facebook now where you can love and cry and all sorts of stuff, getting emotional on Facebook. Um, So yeah, connect, let's have a chat. Okay, before I get into this, I just want to start with a big disclaimer. So pay attention, wake up, listen to this. Um, If you're currently on medication, you can't just stop. You have to work with your doctor to taper it off over time. If that's right for you, do not go cold turkey. Do not stop taking your medication um, until you have planned with a medical professional the appropriate way to come off it. Okay, because there's just um, the withdrawal symptoms, as we we might touch on a little bit, are, are bad enough with prescription drugs. But if you stop it abruptly, then it, it could cause you even more serious damage. So make sure you pay attention to that. Okay, first of all, I am going to say that if you go back and listen to episode 12 of the Anxiety Podcast, I talked a bit about medication and I was kind of on the fence. Maybe it's the English man within me where I'm trying to, where I was trying to kind of be a bit more neutral. And I think this is part of the evolution of what I do. I was trying to kind of keep everybody happy, not upset people that might be on medication, um, and just kind of, you know, appeasing everybody. Um, And as I've kind of grown with the podcast, I feel like now I need to speak my truth. I need to tell you what I actually believe. Um, And that's evolved over time as I've learned things, as I've spoken to more people, as I've educated myself. Um, So if you're listening to this, you're like, hang on a minute, Tim, you said uh, medications were appropriate for some people. Well, you know, I've changed my mind. Okay. And uh, I just want to be upfront about that and say that, you know, that back then I was trying to kind of please and appease and balance on a trapeze. Um, And now I'm saying that uh, I'm going to tell you what I really think. Okay. And what I really think is that the system has failed us. The system's failed you in most places. My experience, and you may have heard this before if you go back to the start, is that uh, I started having panic attacks, I started having anxiety, and I wanted to be fixed. Well, of course we want to be fixed. We break our arm, we go to the hospital, they put it in the cast, and they say, there you go, Mr. Collins, in six weeks' time, come back, we'll cut the cast off, your arm will be a bit skinny and a bit smelly, but you'll be able to build your muscles back up and you will be healed. 
Um, and so you kind of grow up with that kind of thing. And then eventually, or not eventually, but then if, if you come across something like anxiety or depression and there isn't a quick fix, we find that hard to compute, cannot compute. We want to get our heads around it, right? So we, when a doctor says who we trust in a position of authority, wearing a white coat says, you can do this, take a pill. We take the pills, right? That's where the system is failing us because um, the first port of call is the doctor and the doctor gives us something which in in most cases isn't going to help, in many cases is going to make it worse, okay? Um, so I've spoken to a lot of people who are suffering from anxiety and the overwhelming response is that when they've taken medication, it hasn't helped them. It's made them feel worse. Um, the side effects, the feelings of kind of not feeling anything. Um, and the classic one is saying, you know, if you gash your leg open and you go on in North America, you say Band-Aid. In England, we say plasters. But you get a Band-Aid, you put it over the gash on your leg. It's not going to heal very well. It's probably going to get infected. Um, you probably needed stitches to fix that. And it's the same thing as what we're doing with our mental health. If we have anxiety and we start popping pills, then we haven't actually resolved anything. We are covering up an underlying problem. No resolutions have been made. Nothing has been fixed. Nothing has been aligned. No changes have been made. And therefore, you know, if you did then taper off as appropriate in the future, I would expect anxiety to still be there because you haven't actually addressed it. Um, so you could say that taking drugs, taking medication avoids you actually doing the work required to change. That's why I have an issue with it because it's, it's fucking sidestepping the problem, right? I haven't spoken to anybody yet who said, yeah, I was suffering from anxiety. I went on meds. Um, I tapered off them as appropriate and my life's perfect. I'm healed. It's a miracle. Um, I haven't had that conversation yet. Um, and so you hear a lot of, I'll talk about the advertising in a minute, just because I got some statistics from things that I've been reading, which are really interesting. But um, one of the resources I've looked at recently, a book written by Dr. Kelly Brogan, um, which is called A Mind of Your Own. I suggest you check it out because there's a lot of the stuff I'm talking about in there. Um, but I'll quote a few things from that book. But one of the things is not a single study has proven that anxiety or depression is caused by a chemical imbalance in the brain. So all of the time when we're kind of getting told, oh, it's a, a chemical imbalance, that's what we need to fix our anxiety. Well, says who? Like, where's that coming from? Um, and clearly now we find out a lot of it's coming from the pharmaceutical companies who conveniently have a solution for you. OK, so what I'm saying is, is that I think uh, one of the things that comes to me is, is, is the idea of like numbing it out, numbing the pain meaning that you can't feel it is is a way for you not to actually, not for it to sort of come out of you and for you to self-soothe, for you to lean into it, like I talk about, for you to change your life in a positive way, diet, exercise, all the good stuff we talk about. Um, if you can just keep going to eat fast food and crap and take the pills, then it just it just doesn't make sense. And I've kind of bitten my tongue for long enough and now I'm talking about it. Um, you might be able to tell I'm a little bit fired up on this one. So they've also said that, you know, the antidepressant type medication or the SSRIs are harder to get off of than alcohol or opiates. So the withdrawal stuff is, is tough as well. So I think part of this for me is like, if, if in through doing the anxiety podcast, I could reach a few people who went to the doctor, but they're kind of on the fence about the medication and they kind of want to find out if there's a different route. Well, this is the different route. What the other stuff that I'm talking about. Okay. Um, this is the other option you have. You don't have to go on medication, realize it's not for you, feel like a zombie, and then tune into the anxiety podcast and be like, oh, right. Okay. Yeah. It, it kind of makes sense that I can't just fix this with a tablet. That makes sense. Um, I mean, much of this, much of it, I believe, is is caused by, you know, not taking care of the fundamentals. So our diet is off, the alignment in our life is off, as I always talk about, and I'll, I'll touch on that a bit more later on. One of the quotes from that book that really struck me was this one. 
The medicalization of distress obliterates meaning and creates profit. The medicalization of distress obliterates meaning and creates profit. Um, and that's obviously pointing to the fact that, again, that is, the, the solution isn't working. Um, one of the other statistics that blew me away, and I, I saw this one somewhere else, but uh, this was that um, in the States, because advertising is allowed um, in America on TV, there's only two countries in the world that allow advertising on TV for prescription medication. USA and uh, New Zealand is the other one. So, you know, I'm sure these problems exist in, you know, all other countries in the world. But those two have a um, particular challenge because of advertising on TV. And, you know, in the States, specifically, they have 5% of the world's population, but 75% of prescription drugs are consumed in the US, which is just a, a massive number. And I think it's driven a lot by, well, it's obviously driven a lot by advertising on TV, um, and the statistic on that is something like 49% of the requests for prescription drugs when people are in doctor's offices come from a result of them watching ads on TV. Massive industry, and uh, it's obviously driving people to go and see their doctor and ask for things. Um, I sent out an email recently with uh, a YouTube video, maybe I'll put it in the show notes, of Chris Rock, um, doing a, a little bit on this and uh he was basically saying you know chris rock says are you i'll do my best chris rock impression now are you sad are you lonely are you hot are you cold do your teeth hurt and he's kind of going through all these different things but uh, basically until you find a symptom that you have and then you can ask for fill in the blank drug and off you go and he finishes it with saying the one that got me was do you go to bed at night and wake up in the morning? You got me. I got that one. So anyway, that was uh, that was the Chris, Chris Rock skit or bit. I'll put that in the show notes. So you can have a look at him doing it and not me with a, a terrible impression of it. Um, so anyway, these are just some of the, the things that I've been picking up on and wanted to share with you because I think it's, it's an important thing to talk about. Um, if we're going to be fully transparent... And we're going to start getting it out there. Um, I think we need to to get real about this and realize that when we cover up our real feelings, it has to come at a cost. I mean, intuitively, it doesn't make any sense not for it to come at a cost. You can't be curious about your condition, like I always talk about. You can't have curiosity and compassion easily if you can't if you don't actually know what you're feeling, right? And many people I speak to, again, say, I feel like a bit of a zombie or I don't feel anything or it makes me feel worse. There's all these different side effects to to consider. And we want the quick fix, like the broken arm, like I, I talk about. But the the quick fix is ultimately doing the work. The quick fix is is getting involved in, and changing whatever it is in our lives um, that is causing it in the first place. And this could come from absolutely well, a myriad of different places. It could be your relationships. It could be your job. It could be too much time on technology. It could be where you live. It could be the fact that you don't exercise ever or you sit down too much or you eat bad food um, or you're stressed and all this stuff builds up. Like in my story, I basically had all those things going against me and eventually, guess what? Panic attacks. Yes, it makes sense. It's logical to me that the more of those things I fix in my life, the less anxious I'm going to feel. And you, you guys know by now, I'm, I'm honest, like I still feel anxious sometimes. And the times when I feel anxious is because I'm letting one of those slip. Had a few too many drinks, got a bit of a hangover, feel a bit anxious. Funny that, makes sense, right? Um, and I've gone so far as getting specific around the diet side. So I know for me, um, and some of the other studies I'm starting to read, talk about inflammation, being a problem. We know that the ketogenic was diet was invented a hundred years ago to stop children having epileptic fits. And now they're saying that they prescribe that diet to cancer patients or people who want to avoid Alzheimer's or dementia because of the inflammation in our brain. So there's links between that and depression. Anxiety is another hop from there, but not a big stretch. So I think diet's got a lot to do with it. Dairy, grains, sugars, all these things which weren't consumed in a big way 
um, you know, a hundred years ago, and now it's the staple of our diets. And I'll come on to we'll do diet another day because it's this huge, big thing on its own, and I'd like to get some some more experts on around that one. Um, but one of the other things that surprised me is there's never been uh, a human study that successfully links low serotonin levels with issues. And all of these SSRIs are suggesting we bump up our serotonin and that's what we're lacking. But again, unproven. And actually the thing that is proven is that high serotonin may actually be the cause of um, schizophrenia. So it's potentially dangerous, right? So to summarize all this stuff I've been uh, getting animated about today, I think the fundamental overarching thing for me is that drugs will never replace real change. They'll never replace you being courageous. Drugs don't replace courage. The knowledge that you build up, the understanding of your body, leaning in to get an uncomfortable. The more I think about this, the more it makes sense. How can it even be an argument? It makes total sense that we really need to do the work for long, sustainable, lasting change. I am proof of that. And I know lots of other people out there who've been through similar things are going through similar things and are finding that the real difference maker is when they actually start to change their lives in small ways, in big ways. Last time I did anxiety variety, I was talking about stop coping, start changing. And this is an extension of that. Um, it's just, you know, I'm a bit more wound up because I've been kind of like holding back and, and now I'm ready to, to get into it. So I'm going to be bringing more of this kind of discussion to the table because I want to, I mean, ultimately my goal in this, as you know, is to help you change. I want you to overcome anxiety and feel better. That's my only motivation. Whatever it takes for me to get that, this message across to have the most impact in helping people feel better, I'll say it. And uh, if it upsets some people, then so be it for the greater good. Okay. Um, so hopefully you found some of that stuff useful. When I started reading into this and some of the things I found out, I was just like, really? I thought that was the way it was, you know? So with this education, with all these studies that I'm reading, it's, it's really opening my eyes up and I will be continuing to share this message, message with you. Okay. Moving on. Review time. Um, this week's review is from Winnie. And Winnie's review, just so many nice reviews from you. And I always read out one every week on the Anxiety Variety, as you know, because I'm trying to encourage you. This is my sneaky way of saying, hey, you listening, how about you do a review as well? Because I know there's loads more people listening than there is people doing reviews, which means that you can do one. Do it now. Take your 60 seconds. Um, so this one is from Winnie, and it, the title is Life Saving. Um, and it goes like this. I'm a long-time listener, and I'm very sorry it's taken me so long to leave a review. I've dealt with anxiety since childhood. I'm in my mid-50s now, and I swear it's gotten worse. You have no idea, Tim, how many days and nights have been saved by listening to your podcast. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. Thank you, Winnie, for writing the review. Um, and again, I've probably I've mentioned this on the podcast before, but every time I get a review like that, I cut and paste it on my computer and I put it, put it on a folder on my desktop. And any day I ever wake up and I'm like, oh, I don't know, you know, if this is really making a difference or if anybody cares about my rants on the podcast, I go into that folder. I have a read through of some of these reviews. So I'm not, you know, not only are you doing it to, uh, to help up the podcast, but you're doing it to help me. And if this is important to you and you want to keep hearing this conversation, then you know, there's lots of ways that you can get involved. You can do a review, you can share on social media, talk to your friends about the Anxiety Podcast, do a retweet, do a Facebook post, you know, all those sorts of things make a huge difference because it means that the word is getting out. All right. Last but not least, if you would like to contact me because you have a question, um, then feel free to get in touch and send me an email. My email address is on the contact page. Like I said, while you're at anxietypodcast.com, you can have a look at my new video, send me an email and tell me what you think of that. And remember, until next time, less anxiety, more life. Thank you for listening to the Anxiety Podcast. For more information, go to theanxietypodcast.com.